Most tax pros leave a message. It's Jane. I'm moving on to a TurboTax expert who beat your price. Adam Devine, tell him how I feel. Hey, tax pro, she's been thinking twice. Just believe TurboTax will beat your price. This is a tax break. Uh! Switch to a TurboTax live expert and we'll beat what you paid your pro last tax season. Make the switch at TurboTax.com slash beat your price. TurboTax full service only. Sign up by 12-20-2024 and file by 4-1-2025. Full details at TurboTax.com slash beat your price. This is the sound of your ride home with dad after he caught you vaping. Awkward, isn't it? Most vapes contain seriously addictive levels of nicotine and disappointment. Know the real cost of vapes. Brought to you by the FDA. Welcome to another episode of the Nintendo PowerCast. I'm your host, N64 Josh, and we got a very special episode today. We got Thunder Stash Gaming joining us. What's going on? What's up? I am very happy to be here. I'm excited to talk video games with you, talk Switch. A lot of exciting things going on, so yeah, I'm excited to get into it. I am as well, and uh, I think we met through, through Nintendo Prime. And I've I've spent a, uh, a couple episodes hanging out with you on uh, on 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 his podcast, and uh, you're you're a regular host on that on that show, correct? Yes, I am. A lot of fun, and we love having you on always. Yeah, I think the last time I because I can't I'm having issues with uh, some of the online services. My camera was all was all janky. I think I think next time I'm just going to come as a black screen and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just just be an avatar because at least the audio still works so yeah we'll, we'll just the see audio always works there. great <laughs> yeah yeah not the not the video for some reason so um well I, I love doing these shows getting to know other creators um give a quick shout out just where people can find and connect with you absolutely so you can find me on youtube at thunder stash gaming and that's where I focus on reviewing both new and retro video games. So whether it's a you know nostalgic look back at the classics or an in-depth review of the latest releases, the channel covers it all. Uh, I have been gaming for, look at this, I'm 39 now. I've been gaming since I was three. Uh, so I'm sure we'll get into that. But I, I started with, you know, my older brothers. I was the youngest of three. So literally since the late 80s. So if you think about it, I've been gaming for over 35 years, uh, nonstop, never stopped. I never thought it wasn't cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there was never any gaps in life where I, I was like, oh, I'm not into it anymore. It's always uh, been a huge part of my life, really. I would say it's very much part of my my DNA. So, yeah, you can find me there on YouTube, though. I'm also on Instagram and TikTok and Twitter or X, if you want to call it that, as Thunderstash Gaming. So yeah, that's where you can find me. I'm active all the time. All the places. I love it. I love it. What, uh, what shirt are you wearing right now? Oh, you know, I got to say, <laughs> this is uh, Mario's Time Machine. And love it. to me, this is like one of the best box arts ever. Obviously, it's not the best game. But I mean, look at this. You got you got Abe Lincoln yes. on the box art. It's like, what? What were they thinking? Mario's in a time machine. And yeah, this box art is just so good. And of course, for, for us who grew up in the 80s and 90s, the importance of box art yeah. then versus now. You know, back then it had to sell the game. Nowadays... You go on the internet, you read up on it, mm -hmm. you watch the trailer, you watch gameplay. And that's obviously something that we couldn't do back then with technology. So that box art had to be real good to uh, catch people's eyes back in the day. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Have you ever seen the box art documentary? Mm. I have not. I would love to see that, though, because legitimately huge fan of box art. <laughs> 
it's the reason I'm on IMDb because of that documentary. So, oh wow, um, it, it's uh, the last I checked, it was on Amazon Prime. Like, I have Prime. Yeah, but then there's another service that somehow like puts ads on videos. Tubi. Yeah, there you go. I see it. I have Tubi yeah. as well. Okay, so it'll run even without Tubi, I guess. You'll just have ads in, in between. But it's a, it, it originally aired in Canada, and my buddy Rob, who directed it, was like, uh, hey, um, you're on IMDb now because you were That's on. so cool. And so he interviewed me at E3 2017, um, and I talked about the Super Mario Brothers 2 box art. So kind of a uh, fun, fun little fact. And in fact, Rob is doing a Nintendo 64 quest right now where Rob and Jay, Jay is the, is the main character, went and um, his, he was, I think he had two weeks to try to get every N64 game because the Nintendo quest, the first one, he had to get every NES game in a month. Without oh, using, I've seen that. Yeah. So that's, that's the same yeah. guy. That's Rob and Jay. And so oh, okay. um, N64 Quest is, I believe, if, if, if people have been listening to the show for a while, Rob's come on and talked about, like, he talked about it. I think they're kickstarting right now. So, uh, but this time, if he, whatever they collected, they're reselling to put to charity, I believe is how it's, uh, I believe is how it's working out. So um, they're raising, raising money, I believe, for Alzheimer's or something like that. So a quick little plug for Nintendo 64 Quest. You guys go, go check it out. So... That sounds awesome. I will definitely have to check that out. And, you know, I got to say, I was at E3 2017 as well. Were you really? I was. I I had I had such a great time. My cousin and I went. He's a couple years older than me. And it was my first E3. And, of course, Same. growing up as a kid, you always want to go, right? Yep. It's a, it's a bucket list item. Oh, yeah. If you grew up in the 80s and 90s, you know, we... We used to wait in such anticipation for, you know, the the E3 Nintendo Power or the EGM E3 to come out, the magazine, because that's when that's when and where you learn about all the new games coming out. Right. But I had a great time and we partied every day after E3 across the street with Devolver, with Devolver? Digital. Yeah. Yeah. Were you over there? <laughs> oh, Yeah. <laughs> Dude, okay. <laughs> I wonder if we ran into you because we were there all three days. Okay. And okay, this is gonna be a funny story. Uh now I, I will say I don't I don't normally do this, but let me tell you. So we go to E3. We both are working at Loan Depot Mortgage Company. I worked there for 10 years. He still works there. So we got we took PTO because we both want to do this as a bucket list thing. And so we, we're not with the press or anything, of course. I have, at this point in my life, I had done nothing with YouTube. And we saw that there was a party over there, and we saw the kegs being rolled in. Oh, yeah. We're like, oh, what's going on, you know? And we saw that you had to have a certain color lanyard to get in. Okay. And I told my cousin, I said, look, this is what we're going to do. I'm like, we got to act as if. Uh, you're going to just walk right in like you belong here. And then I want you to yell to me from outside the gate to come in. And I'm just going to try and come in and see if it works. What's the worst can happen? The security guy is going to say, let me see your pass, right? No big deal. And I walk away, except that didn't happen. We got in and then we started talking with, uh, I think the, the owner was the owner of Devolver there. I the, believe, the creator. I don't. So the people I spoke with were like, like YouTubers and community managers and stuff like that. That uh, um, I think her name was. I want to say her name was Kelsey. She was a kind of a big retro game YouTuber, and then okay. and then ended up wor was was working working for them. So I know they were hated by E3 for being there. Oh my god, that was the highlight personally of E3 for us, and. I remember they had the uh, Volkswagen. Yep. And, you know, that that was fun. <laughs> Going in there and hanging out. Uh, they had uh, the, the Poly Mega, if I recall, the Poly Mega arcade games that you could play. Okay. And it was a blast. They gave us shirts. Devolver Digital E3 shirts that I still have somewhere, but because when I took pictures with them, 
I remember talking with people from uh, Niche Gamer. Okay. I don't know if you remember that, uh, but I talked with some people there. What what we told everyone we did, because everyone asked, what do we do? Okay. So Here I told my cousin, we, yeah, I told my cousin, <laughs> we got to come up with something. And I just came up with it out of thin air. I'm like, we're going to tell everybody that we're from ESRB and that they send us every year because we're the only young single guys that don't have families. No. So <laughs> they send us every year and, and it totally worked, dude. It, it totally worked. And people were asking us, what's it like working at ESRB? I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> so, you know, it was interesting because it felt like a movie in a sense. Yeah. And we had, I swear to you, we had so much fun. Though. And I remember telling my cousin because he he games a lot, but not as much as he'd like to. But I remember telling him, I'm like, dude, Devolver's really cool. They they do some really funny uh, E3 skits. <laughs> oh, yeah. I said, they're just a cool company, man. I said, they make really cool games. And I said, I tell you, they're up and coming. And of course, here we are, 2024, and they just keep banging them out. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, they, they're definitely go- going up. So, yeah, I just wanted to share that story. That was the only E3 I was at and bl- had an absolute blast because of that party. <laughs> we went all three days. So, did you play Battlefield at that E3? I didn't. Okay. No. So, Battlefield, like, where it went back to being like the old, like, like the old school, right? Was first showing, like, that was the first playable, like, demo was at that E3. And Titanfall, I want to say Titanfall 2 maybe was getting some hype around that. I just remember there being a giant statue, but I, I went to 2017 and 2019 and they're far enough apart now that like it, they kind of blend together a little bit. Yeah. But we played Battlefield and I remember, you know, they've got all the, 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 the devs are walking around and, and I get into a, I get into a one V two and I empty a clip into a guy and drop him and then switch to my pistol and drop the other guy. And I went and teabagged him. And the guys that were there were they were like, yo, did you just team? And Dude, I'm that's like, awesome. I just went 1v2, of course I did. They were that like, is great. And so they were they were just cracking up. Like we had, you know, we had some great laughs and stuff. It was just uh Yeah, it was an incredible time. Like just 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 amazing. Like I think my first show before that was Screw Attack. Like the screw attack convention in like Dallas or something like that. So, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I always enjoyed their content growing up. Right. They're their right. top tens. And yeah, they were, they were good, man. I enjoyed them a lot. <laughs> I, hardly, I didn't know they had a convention. I had hardly, like, I didn't even know much about them other than I'd heard their names. And then we got in, I was part of a podcast that got it like, we got in to cover it and you know so people are like what is his name jim quisition or something like that they were like yeah there was this massive line and i'm like who is that because i don't watch like i don't watch content any like i had i once i started creating content i stopped watching it because it was like i'm just too too busy to sit and consume yeah. it and so uh so i had no clue who jim quisition is and there's this massive line of people that were super excited to go see him but anyway i just, know his name I've know his name. I've seen him like on YouTube. I've never watched anything. He stands and, up like a dictator and like gives his uh, gives his his thoughts and opinions. And it's super funny. Like oh, interesting. Like, I might actually like that. It sounds funny. It's yeah. He he looks like a like like the penguin or something. Like he's just kind of like a like an old school looking villain. So um, oh, cool. I, I could, yeah. I don't know. Just. I mean, again, some people love it. Some people hate it, whatever. Like, I just, I don't, I don't have a lot of time to, to, to sit and watch it. But, uh, um, well, let's, let's continue back in time since you're wearing Mario's time machine here. And, um, yeah. you said three years old, like, yep. what was the first controller to, uh, to grace your fingers? The NES. Love it. Yeah. First game I played was Super Mario Brothers. Okay. All right. And that's, just hooked that's what, uh, from that point on. Me. Yeah, and you know, you know how it is. Like, you grow up with siblings, you have to share the controller, you know, pass it around, and it was very occasional that I got to play 
when my brothers were playing. It was it was very much an afterthought, right? To hand me the controller to see if you want to try. <laughs> right, right, right. So, so when they'd go to school, that's when I'd get my gaming in. I see. So my brother, middle brother, is three years older than me. My oldest is five. And so that is when they, they had taught me how to play. And that's when I was able to then start playing while they're at school and get really good. And from that point forward, I, I swear to you, from that point forward, absolutely hooked. Like, go to bed dreaming about video games, hooked. Talk about it all the time. Can't wait to go to the uh, video game rental store. We had this place down the street called Act One of Video. And you you know how it is. Like, if, if you had a local rental store video game we had a blockbuster down the street we had a gamers which ended up becoming our favorite and then act one video they closed i think in the very early 90s but you know how it is when you go rank games and you scan the shelves and you know all the box arts you know exactly where they are and you can immediately spot when there's a new game Mm -hmm. it's like oh something new came in and i always mention this when i'm talking anytime with uh, younger gamers, it's like back in the day, you don't know when a new game's coming out. You're lucky if you if you know the the month or quarter that a game's releasing, and that's even if you know anything about it. Like le- legitimately, we learned, and I'm sure you did too, about Super Mario Brothers three through the Wizard, the movie. Oh yeah. We all had to ask each other, like, is this game real or is it just made for the movie? Like, it was like is this the trailer happening? of the movie is kind of where we, if I remember correctly, that's where we first saw. Yeah. Like, I remember shows like Entertainment Tonight being like, you know, <laughs> th- the new Nintendo game is going to be, an- is has has been announced in the trailer, you know, like that's, or the local news or whatever, you know, like it, it yeah. wasn't just a, from what, from my, I mean, again, I was, we were, we were pretty young back then. So yeah. like just, just trying to remember that, but like, I, yeah, the wizard for sure was the, was like, I mean, what was a 90 minute commercial for Nintendo games? So. Yeah, it was. And of course that's awesome because mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. we didn't get that back in the day. So right. like, this is really cool actually to get a 90 minute Nintendo commercial. Uh, but yeah, that is when I started three years old. Uh, the first game I ever bought with my own, you know, my own money, birthday money, right? Was The Legend of Zelda for NES. Okay. Mom took me to Target. And I remember my older brother came with us. And you know, she said, you pick out whatever game you want for your birthday. And I was so excited to finally uh, be included in the discussion, right? Because pr- prior to they would decide my two older brothers what game and my input didn't matter because I'm the the youngest brother. So I choose Zelda. My brother Richard, my oldest brother, he interjects. Mom, don't don't let him don't let him get this game. He's gonna hate it. It's so hard. And you have to read in it all the time. And he's gonna get <laughs> lost and then he's gonna ask you to return it, Mom, and you won't be able to return it. Because the box will already be open. And you know the return policy is once it's opened. You can't return it. And I'm, I'm like furious inside. Because I want this game. Because I had seen them play it. right? And I sat back and watched. And I'm, I'm like watching them. And I'm thinking of ideas of what they could do. To get past this part. Right. But they don't right. ask me right. And so I couldn't wait to get this game. Because I'm like I want to beat this game. And be like yeah what's up now. Like, you guys are idiots. <laughs> <laughs> so uh Long story short, my mom said I couldn't get it. Oh, no. I, and I, again, I was upset. I was upset, man. But, you know, as a kid, like, I, you also have to be thankful that you can even go buy a video game, that I'm even being taken to buy one. That was a big deal. So I chose a game I didn't want, which was Adventure Island, which is not a bad game. Mm. It's just it's not Zelda, obviously. Mm-hmm. So I go home. I play it. My mom asked me probably about an hour and a half later. So she's like, so what do you, what do you think of the game? You know, I said, it's okay. Like, you know, it's all right. 
She's like, but you really wanted Zelda, didn't you? I'm like, yeah, I, I really did. I really did. And I'm not going to ask you to return it. <laughs> so she said, all right, get in the car. We're going to see if we can return this. I'm like, but, but it's open. But, you know, it's open. She's like, I know. We're, we're going to try. We're going to try. I go, okay, cool. So we get back in the car. Mom talks to the manager at Target in the electronics section. <laughs> and they okayed it. I, I don't remember the conversation. Mm-hmm. I really don't. All I know is obviously the outcome was I got Zelda. And that's that's my favorite I video game series of okay. all time. Okay. And I did, of course, I ended up beating the game. Uh, it took some it took a long time. I didn't beat it till I was seven or eight. But I remember the morning I beat it. I remember waking up at like three in the morning on a Saturday and going into my brother's room where the TV was. Because this is back when we we didn't have TVs in every bedroom. It was a uh, it was a big deal to get a TV in a kid's room, right? Oh yeah. Because you had the, the TV in the in the family room, and if you had one in your room, that was a huge deal. So oh, there you, was one in my brother's room kid. for all three of us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just like Back to the Future. You know, like you you don't have two TVs in your house. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember going in there at like three in the morning. And the reason I woke up so early was, was because I was so close to beating it and I knew it and I just couldn't sleep. I love that. Yeah. So I sneak in, I turn the volume uh, down enough so I can hear it, but it's really low. So my brother doesn't wake up. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I remember he ends up waking up around like seven o'clock and he sees where I'm at. Like he hears the music from level nine. And, you know, the dungeon music is unique in level nine. And he's like, you know, oh, my God, like, where are you? I'm like, I'm at the, I'm at the end, dude, I'm at the last dungeon. <laughs> he's like, what? <laughs> and both my brothers came in and, you know, watched me play, watched me beat it. And it was a special moment, obviously. For sure. I remember it, like, perfectly to this day. So, yeah, that's a little uh, old school story. That was the first game I ever bought, Legend of Zelda. And so, yeah. I love that. I love that. That was the first Nintendo game I ever played. Really? Yeah. I was swimming. I've told it on here a few times, but I was swimming at my grandma's house. She lived on a on a small lake um in in western Washington and and my step cousin was there and he had the Nintendo and I remember he turned on Zelda and I could see like I'd been playing it like all I had known up to that point was Atari or the arcade. And so like I'm sure I knew of Nintendo, right? And what probably really want, like probably saw it in stores and things like that. But like, I remember like turning it on, standing in front, and like I'm like, what is this rectangle controller, right? It's not a it's not a single stick and a button, and like just seeing the way the sword flashed was like so magical. It was like, yo, this is the arcade at home. Like what? And my mom is screaming, like, get back out, get back outside, go swim. And I'm like. You know, until she finally had to come and get me and like pull me off of the thing. But I was just like, yep. but you know, but it wasn't a game I was allowed to have because it had magic. And so like, okay, yeah. So, you know, I had to hide the booklet for Super Mario Brothers because it said Bowser used black magic to change the, the <laughs> to change the toads into to bricks. And so I was like, like, this can't be, I won't be able to play this game if, uh. If, yeah, my, if, my family know. was super strict too. Yeah. Like super strict when it came to that that stuff and uh without getting into too much of it, but I know exactly what you're talking about. And so, uh, thankfully I was able to play Zelda, but there was definitely a lot of games I was not allowed to play and if I was going to play it, it required a lot of salesmanship. A lot. <laughs> there is no better salesman than a child of the 80s trying to convince their mother of something like. Yeah, 100 <laughs> percent. Especially if she'd heard anything from uh, Dr. Dobson, you were hosed. Like, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> if there was anything on the news about it, there's no way. Like, uh, obviously, with Mortal Kombat, that was a big one oh, with C-SPAN. Yes. Yeah. And that was a whole ordeal trying to rent that. Uh, I remember renting Sega CD once from gamers with my brothers and we were trying to talk my dad into it because he took us mm-hmm. and, you know when dad takes you 
got a better chance of getting something you're not allowed to get. Yeah, it's right. usually when you can rent an R-rated movie. Uh, if, you know, you don't say anything to your mom kind of thing. Right, yeah. You gotta keep it on the down, and though. You have to, like... Anytime she'd go out of town, it's like, hey, can we watch Beverly Hills Cop? <laughs> but if mom was there, can't watch it, because... Eddie Murphy saying the F word way too many times. <laughs> right, right, right. I remember trying to rent Night Trap. And, you know, we, we really wanted to rent it for for obvious reasons at that age. And we couldn't. Dad's like, there's no way. I will never hear the end of this from your mom. Mm-hmm. And then she'll never go out of town. And then we'll never be able to rent anything that you guys want to rent. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Okay, I see the big picture here. Yep, that makes <laughs> we'll sense. We'll pass on that. But I yeah. ended up picking it up, of course, for Switch. Yeah. The 25th anniversary edition. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Not a good game, but uh, it was fun. It's still cool, though. It's a cool experience. Right. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Some, some. I mean, yeah, it was all over the news. You couldn't... You, you, you knew about the game only because... Not because of marketing, but because of the press. So... <laughs> exactly. And if a game got negative press... In that sense, as a kid, you want to play it. Right. It's like, oh, that that means I need to play this game. Oh, Mortal Kombat, cool. exactly. It was like, it was like, like, I literally, it, I don't understand the thinking back then where it was like the adults all thought that like this game, these games were going to make us go crazy. And it was like, no, this is just super cool stuff that like, like. You know, I don't know. I didn't. I. I. I didn't go out thinking I was going to pull somebody's head off and their spine would come out with it. Like that is make believe. You know. Yeah. But. Exactly. <laughs> I know, and that, and that was part of the salesmanship when, when, with my mom. Uh, you know, trying to talk her into it, and of course we um, told her that hey, the Super Nintendo version, you know, doesn't have blood. Just sweat. So that's just another reason to let us run that one. I mean, it's not right. that realistic. You know, the Sega one, I can understand, Mom, but right. <laughs> Super Nintendo doesn't use no blood. So, you know, maybe beat us in the middle. Let us rent this one. Yeah, if you have, if you get to watch any of the, uh, like, console wars or any of those, like, those documentaries, like, watching Nintendo flip where they were in court, like, we don't have blood in ours, Judge. And then they got their, they just absolutely got taken to the cleaners with the uh, sales. And then when two comes out, they're like, we are, we are exactly like the arcade. Like we're as yeah. bloody and gory as can be, you know, it's just funny. Just so, so funny. Cause it's just, you know, whatever the PR needs from them at that time. Uh, you said yeah. something about going into your brother's room and getting the volume just right. And I think it's worth pointing out, especially for anybody that, that didn't experience this as a kid in the eighties. And I just saw a meme of this, right? Remember the movie, a quiet place, right? Yeah. And oh yeah. And he takes his son up to the mountains and then they're coming back or to the waterfall and they can actually converse or whatever. Yeah. And then they're coming back and there's that old guy and his wife had been like, I think killed by the monster. And then he just screams at the top of his lungs and like John has to like run with his son and and get away. Right. Well, the meme was like, um, it was John and it said me, a kid in the eighties walking up to my TV to turn it on before my parents were awake and then oh yeah and then it switched to the old guy the picture sw- the, the 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 picture of the old guy <laughs> underneath and it's like my tv because he's like it never failed my dad would have the tv up so loud the night before and then i'd be like power and volume down like as as hard and as fast as i could like <laughs> yeah there there was a total strategy to it and it and the strategies varied right depending on the model of tv that you're using right, right. because if it's if it's a turn knob obviously it's going to be a lot easier to turn the volume down but if it's a digital button which that's usually what it was yeah you you had one hand or one finger on the power and the other one on the volume down button and then like with the tv in my my brother's room I was able to turn it on and press the mute button and then turn it down. Cause TVs back then you could press the mute and it would show you the volume bar and show you where the volume's at in red. And I remember the text was green. So I could get the volume all the way down to like, you know, two notches and then unmute yeah. it. 
And yes. that, that was always the best strategy if, you know, your your TV allowed for that. But yeah, it was a big deal. That Because that, that's, that's how you're going to get some gaming in before people wake up yep. and say that, hey, you can't. You can't do this right now. I need you to do this list of uh, chores all day. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Or I had a 45 minute limit. So it was like, it was like, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So we've talked a little bit of Zelda, NES, any other notable titles on NES that uh, really, really just kind of helped define your, your childhood? You know, gosh, there's so many. I still have all of my NES games from when I was a kid. And even when I was a, a teenager, I was able to take advantage of Funko Land. <laughs> mm, there you go. And back in the day, you know, they used to have that price sheet up at the, the front desk area where you check out. And I cannot tell you how many games there were that were under a dollar, which is insane. Because there's no way you're getting that. I'm talking like 39 cents, 79 cents. Yeah. And so I was able to, of course, get a lot of games that way as well. But w when it comes to my overall collection, I think I have over 300 Nintendo cartridges. The The ones that have probably the fondest memories, Maniac Mansion is a mm -hmm. game that always comes to mind. Yeah. Okay. And I think, you know, as a kid growing up in the 80s, uh, households didn't have computers like, like we do now. You, people started getting computers in the, the 90s, early to mid 90s. AOL came out. That's when things started to kind of change. And so playing Maniac Mansion on the NES was the only known way to play the game. We have a lot of great memories uh, just playing that as kids growing up, but we're all like in the same room and we're saying, you know, why don't you try doing this or you try doing that and just trying to solve how to play that actual game and, and progress in it. That's one I'm a huge fan of uh, the duck duck tales, of course, the, okay. the moon, the Let, moon theme will yes. forever be ingrained in my head. <laughs> yes. Okay. Now you're like Maniac Mansion. I heard of so many times, right? I was, I was on Nintendo power all the time. Like it felt like it was marketed very well, but yeah. Great cover on Nintendo power. <laughs> like next to Mario games, especially like Mario two hurdles and ducktales were like, Oh yeah. Like I could play through ducktales and then start it over again. And I could play through Turtles and start it over again. But outside of that, I didn't... A lot of times I would play a game one time and that was it. I have a lot of games we played a lot. Uh, Contra, of course. The, I mean, just Konami in general, okay? Mm -hmm. Castlevania. 1, 2, and 3. Simon's Quest, Dracula's Curse. Absolutely love, love Castlevania games. And of course, all three Turtles have them all played them a ton absolutely love them and then even games like track and field track and field part two specifically okay we played that game so much because you know it's a two-player game right and olympic events and it, it really comes down to how fast can you smash the buttons of course it's a button masher for the most part tons of fun e even that game that wasn't as popular, but Jackal on regular Loved Nintendo. Yeah. Loved it. Yeah. Yep. So good. Konami, gosh, part of me sometimes wonders if they might have peaked during the NES era. Yeah. They did great during Super, not as many games. Of course, you know, we had Symphony of the Night and we had the Metal Gear, all the Metal Gear games, but. Wasn't Turtles technically Konami? Yeah, Ultra. Ultra, right. Which yeah. is their, their their brand that they came out with Yeah, to mm -hmm. bypass... Nintendo's restrictions. You know, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so... All of those fond memories. And then the, the games that we all talk about, right? The Marios, 1, 2, and 3. The Zelda games. You know, I look up behind me. Of course, the Mega Man's. Capcom just nailed it with the Disney games. 
Mm -hmm. That was the best use of a Disney license I've ever seen to yeah. this day. I don't think that'll ever be fixed. Uh, Double Dragons, one, two, and three. River City Ransom. Yep. Great one. There's so many, man. I, yeah. I absolutely love the regular Nintendo. Huge I'm, fan. I'm somewhat envious of the fact that you got to play with your brothers. Like, I'm I'm the oldest of six, but my I have the next three siblings were sisters who did not really game. Gaming wasn't oh. a big like the, the the NES was a family gift on a Chris on Christmas morning from my aunt, and they were like basically screwed out of a present that that morning. So um I, I got Duck Hunt and Mario and it was the Grey Zapper. And yeah. basically that aunt that saw me play Zelda that day that summer day. I didn't even ask my parents for the Nintendo. I was like, this is not an option. Like it wouldn't even, you know. Right. So talk about the ultimate surprise. You see this big gift and it says to the family. So I again did not think for a second about the and then all of a sudden I'm like, I own the NES. Like this is this is amazing. And my dad wouldn't hook it up till after we ate. I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> like, oh, classic. Yeah, because you always had to get the parents to hook it up. Yeah. Yeah, then that they, was like the last time. Do it. That was the last time that he hooked anything up, and I had to hook everything up going forward. Like he's like, I don't know how to do this stuff. So we but. we also got the NES for Christmas. Okay, and uh, very similar, very similar scenario. I think uh, grandparents bought it. I was very young, of course. Mm -hmm. But what what a gift, man! What a gift! That's for sure. Anytime you get a video game console <laughs> as a Christmas present yeah. as a kid, that's always going to be like a core memory you'll never forget. Yep. Yeah, it was that and the SNES for me. And then even the GameCube, I wasn't a kid any longer, but the the GameCube was, um, you know, my, my wife at that time went out, got every family member to buy some kind of peripheral. She saved all of her tips. And like, uh, that's, you know, that's how I ended up getting every, every time we moved to the, like, go to the next house, go visit friends, go see somebody the Christmas morning. Oh, there's Star Wars Rogue Squadron. There's, oh, there's, okay. I think smash, I think extreme G racing. Here's another controller. Here's the save. Here's the memory cards, you know, just. That's great. Like, I love that. I camped out, uh, for the GameCube at Best Buy. Okay. It was in high school. It was uh myself, my friend Matt, Brandon, Reggie and my cousin Jim and he also had to open that oh, morning at Best okay. Buy. <laughs> we had so much fun and from that point forward we camped out for like every console. But that first one with GameCube was really special. After school, prior to the GameCube launching, we would go to Best Buy all the time. And I don't know if you did this as a kid, but as a teenager, we, we just go to Best Buy to just like go hang out and like check out the demos and like oh, see yeah. what's new. Yeah. Yeah, like for you, sure. You probably weren't going to buy anything, but you're just, you're just going there to hang out because it was fun. It was a good atmosphere. And I remember they had uh, Rogue Squadron, of course, as the playable demo prior to the GameCube actually launching in the US. And so we'd go there like I think the first week that that demo came out, we might have been there every day after school to go play oh. Rogue Squadron. And it was special, man, because back then and I, I want to think that even to this day, that game is still stunning. Oh, it is. It is. Yeah, and I, it's the GameCube era is kind of where I started to become somewhat of like a, like, I wasn't, I, I had the component cables for GameCube. Like, I wanted to start seeing, like, you know, I wanted things to look as good as possible. And I lost yeah. those cables somewhere along the way. It makes me so sad because they're not cheap now. Um, Were they the Nintendo ones or the, I, I think Monster came out with some too? I I from my from my understanding Nintendo's the only one that ever made them cuz it was a like a chipset. 
that that they had. I, I could be I could be mistaken, but I, I had the actual Nintendo ones. Yeah, I could be thinking of uh, the Wii. I know the Wii had the the monster cable component, which was a lot easier to. That one's a way easier to find. It came with component cables, okay. if I remember right. You know, and that, I think now I use a HDMI adapter in the back of the Wii, and it's you're good to go. But and ended up getting one for a game. I have one for GameCube as well. It's like it's like three D printed and has some you know has some has some guts on the inside. But but just that progressive scan mode. You know, when I got my Sony exactly. Wega, like it was like oh my goodness, like you yeah. know, it was not that huge of a difference. But back then, yeah. it wasn't. And I bought a Sony Wega as well because I worked at Best Buy back in the day, too, when I was, I think I was when I was 17, 18. And, of course, we got employee discounts. And you could just go up to any terminal throughout Best Buy, any of the, the computer terminals, and you can just look up anything in the store, like anything you're interested in. You could just take the SKU, write it down, mm. and then go to the terminal and see what the employee price is. And sometimes, occasionally, there would be a really steep discount on a TV. Like, you could have 10 Sony TVs, and nine of them, you get, like, a $50, $60 discount. But one of them, you get, like, a $500 discount. Oh, wow. You're like, whoa, whoa, what? What's this about? And then you start researching the TV and everything. That's how I ended up getting my first Sony Wega. Yeah. But yeah, the progressive scan didn't make a huge difference. I wanted it to. Of course, we had like a handful of games that you could play that was also in widescreen. Just, <laughs> it didn't move the needle much. It, no. No, but again, it was like, if you were if you were into it, it was like you, 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 you know, I remember like buying surround sound, like the whole deal. Like I wanted, I wanted my games to like, I was super bummed out that GameCube did not have digital, uh, Dolby digital. Oh yeah. I remember that back in the day. I think it just had what was called DTS. I think if I remember correctly or Dolby yeah, two, maybe. DTS. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, I think so. it was Dolby DTS. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I mean, I, it got to the point, like I couldn't play resident evil during at night. I was too freaked out by it. Like I'd, I'd only play it during the day. <laughs> I remember playing resident evil four on GameCube specifically. And that game, there was a point in that game where it got a little, a little creepy mm. when you got to the, the later, later end of the game, when they're all, uh, you're inside the, think the castle and they're all roped i've never played it resident evil 4 no i played the first one on gamecube oh the remake God. and i never Dude, played the fourth one you would love it i, I need to i need i know there's it's a remake so now right good. so i yeah and yeah. i played it and it, it's amazing it's absolutely amazing but yeah you would love it you would absolutely love it uh i would say it's my favorite easily lot, my favorite a, resident evil a lot of people say that for sure yeah so. i played them all i played them all i played you mean, you know, even Code Veronica on Dreamcast. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Which did end up on the yeah. GameCube, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it did. Yeah, they got them all. They got, ended up getting, uh, yeah, I think all of them came out. And of course, we got the Resident Evil Zero, which was a GameCube exclusive at the time. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, that was the Resident Evil was like the way that you could combat. Like, in, if you were having console wars with somebody, you were like, "Show me a game that looks better than this." <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that was back when the whole Capcom Five deal happened. If you remember that, it was uh, it was like Beautiful Joe, mm. uh, PN PN O three, uh, Killer Seven, remember Resident that one. Evil Four, yep. and then a game that got canceled that looked somewhat reminiscent of what a Kid Icarus could have looked like on GameCube. Oh, interesting. I remember that, and everyone wondered if this was a canceled Kid Icarus game. <laughs> huh. We still don't know to this day. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Well, let's fast forward a bit. Let's talk about, let's talk about the Switch. We're, we're getting near the end of the Switch's life cycle, and I was like, you know, I want to hear your five favorite games and so 
what what uh that's not an easy list to come up with five games on a with a console that has so many stellar titles and how'd you do yeah it, it's not easy it never is and i thought about it the direction i wanted to go in and what to me made the most sense what was most logical as far as how i'm going to craft this list and I think what you got to do is say, okay, this has to be exclusive Switch titles, in my opinion, right? Because if I can play a game on PlayStation and Switch, I don't want to make that into my top five. Let's talk about the games you can only play on Switch. Mm -hmm. I disregarded the fact that, yeah, this might be more fun to play because I can play it portably. But there's just so many great, Nintendo exclusives that this has to be a Nintendo exclusive list. And so with that said, the first title I went with is Super Mario Odyssey. Okay. Now, and are these in an order? Like, like, or is it just five? Like, if you were just picking five, no, no particular okay. order. No particular order. Gotcha. Okay. So I got to go with Odyssey and... This game was so much fun from the get-go. And it was exciting because, you know, we had Super Mario 64 that really revolutionized everything. And I was there for it before day one. I got to play 64 uh, back in June. It was, the we it was the weekend before 4th of July weekend. So June of 96, Gamers, the video game store I told you about that we'd rent games from, they got in the Japanese import of Nintendo 64. And I got to rent it the weekend before they put out the advertisement for it. Oh. The guy who was the manager at the time, his name's Jimbo. <laughs> he, knew, he knew all of us, my brothers, my parents. We've been going there for years, right? He, he practically watched us grow up. And my dad and I went in there and he said, hey, he's like, you guys know about the Nintendo 64? I'm like, you know, I've heard I've heard a little bit about it, but, you know, I don't know. Is it real? <laughs> it's not much I know at the time. And he told us we had just got it in mm -hmm. from Japan. He's like, I'm making the flyers right now, but we're not going to advertise it till Monday. Do you guys want to take it home for the weekend and give it a spin? I'm just like. Whoa, what? <laughs> and I was seriously like, I was like losing my mind, right? Yeah. I'm, t I'm 12 years old at the time. And I remember asking like, well, how much, how much is it to rent? He's like, don't worry about it. Wow. Because, you know, that would be expensive. For sure. Yeah. If you're a kid, that's going to take, again, selling Selling your parents on it. Right. I'm renting a console for however much it was going to be. So, long story short, we got to take it home. It it was mind-blowing. Absolutely. Obviously, it was in Japanese. The two games were, was, a, of course, Mario 64, and the other one was an F1 racing game called okay. Human Grand Prix. Okay, interesting. Those were the games. Uh I played Human Grand Prix a little bit, but I played obviously a lot of Mario 64 and you know, jumping in the paintings, just mind blowing everything about it. Since then, though, right? Played Mario Sunshine day one. Didn't come close to capturing the feeling. And I know it's not going to because the, the shift from 2D to 3D is just something very special that if you were there for it, it, again, it's in a it's a core memory now. You'll never forget what that was like. And so I knew I wouldn't get that feeling again. But with Mario Sunshine, I just didn't feel it on a variety of levels. I liked the game. I beat it. But I don't love it. Then Mario Galaxy 1 and 2 comes out, right? And I saw a lot of that magic being captured again. Oh, yeah. Especially with the physics, right? Yeah. And and God, the soundtrack. Mm -hmm. Soundtrack is so good. And so I saw us kind of 
returning back to that point. But at the same time with the Wii, you know, you don't really have traditional controls, right? You still have the motion controls. You're still wagging the controller around here and there. Okay. So I'm starting to wonder, are we ever going to get something that feels like a continuation of Super Mario 64? And I really start to wonder, because I mean, think about it. Mario 64 comes out September of 96. Odyssey comes out in 2017. Yep. So 21 years later. Yeah. I'm like, we're back. (laughs) We're back. No doubt. This is is it. This is it. This feels like an extension. This feels like the sequel to Super Mario 64 that we never got. And that's why this game undoubtedly has to be on my list because of everything they did so right and the new things that they did. Like with Cappy, being able to take control of other things, like being able to take control of the the, the dinosaur. Was yeah. it a T-Rex? Yep, the, the T-Rex for sure. So cool. And then uh, being able to, to take control of what? The electrical current? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was like, become a spark. This is crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then seeing Mario like interact in uh, New Donk City with with humans, right? That's not something we had really seen before. Like him in a an actual like real real life location. Like you're in New York. This is interesting. Yeah, I never thought I'd see this in a in a Mario game. <laughs> There's so many things like that, and then the variety. Just the environmental variety in this game. I think with Galaxy, there was variety, no doubt. But you're going from like galaxy to galaxy, and they're like almost like biomes, each galaxy. Mario 64, like when you jumped into a painting, you didn't have like the space in the background, outer space. Where with Galaxy, that that was always present, the outer space. And in some way or another, you could see it in the background somewhere. And I think with Odyssey, when, like when you enter a world, that is the world you're in. And I like that aspect of yeah. it. And I really love that variety. And I think the thing that really brought me back was the end. Like, And I, I don't want to say because there are people who probably have not played this and I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but... You know what I'm talking about, the end, and how it all kind of tied back to 1996, right? I was just like, oh, God, you guys, you guys did it. You and not only 96, wow but 85. Yeah, that's right. Totally. Uh, and, and even some of the some of the costumes or like the, the outfits you can get in the game. I mean, one of them specifically, hey. Oh, again, I won't say what it is, but a holiday themed one. I'm mm-hmm. saying this is so cool. Yep. You know, like usually I don't care about that stuff. It, it's a nice bonus. Sometimes it's cool. But for the most part, I'm like, yeah, whatever. But putting that on and like running around and playing the game a little bit, especially because there is more stuff to do after that if you want more of a challenge. And so doing it in that costume, I'm like, this is really cool, man. They really just knocked out of the park. What are they going to do next? Is my thought immediately. Yeah. And then they did nothing. Nothing. Right. Which gets me excited though. Yeah. Because it's like, dude, they've had so long to cook. I mean, and we all know, we know that Nintendo said this as long as they've been doing prior interviews. As soon as they finish a game, just like as soon as they release a console they're literally working on the next one immediately works being done on it and so i gotta imagine at the very least after odyssey was released they're in the the concept stage of what the next mario is going to be i just feel like they've had so long to think about this next mario no doubt no doubt and you hit the nail on the head with the 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 ending sequence i literally i don't know that i've ever smiled so hard i've said it so many times on this show i don't know that i've ever smiled so so hard at a video game before like 
Odyssey was, and it still is to this day. I'm running around in the Mario, one of the Mario motors. Mario's got his cap on backwards. Like I'm wearing mine right now and running around in the Mario motor stuff, which is just, I like it. There's just, so, there's so much there. There's so much there. Did you miss power-ups? Fire Flower, Superstar, the, the power-ups that were in Galaxy. I didn't. I didn't miss them. And I think the reason why is because, probably because of the transformations. Got it. Okay. With, with Cappy, I think that helped kind of bridge it. The fact that we didn't have power-ups. Yeah. I mean, even you saying it now, my my first immediate thought was like, yeah, you know, I I don't, I haven't even thought of that. The fact that we didn't have power-ups. I mean, I know I'm aware of that, but it's just not something I really even gave thought to because everything was just so much fun. There was so much going on. I didn't feel like it was missing anything. Yeah. I I, I, I would agree. I would agree. The, the thing that I... Throughout my childhood, power-ups defined Mario games for me. Right? I didn't even play 64 until like the Wii U Mario 64. Oh. I, I came, I went over to a buddy's house and I saw him throwing Bowser off. And I was like, that's the final boss. Hmm. Did not knowing that you do it multiple times. And I was like, well, I guess I don't need to, I don't, I don't need to play this, I guess. So, you know, and so it's just, it's not something I, and I loved Yoshi and the hype that was around world when it came out and everything that like, I just was like, I, I don't, I don't remember now if I was like, this is not my Mario. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if that was the, but I think it was more of a, like, I was far more interested in sing or in multiplayer games. Also like the first two games I bought were Mario Kart and Goldeneye. Oh yeah. And and so it wasn't until like I did some Shadows of the Empire and then um, like, you know, some Turok 2 and there was obviously single player aspects, but Turok 2 had multiplayer. And uh, but I remember Ocarina being the, the like I was like, oh, I, and honestly, after playing Ocarina, I'm like, why didn't I go back and play 64? I, Mario 64. I really, really should have. 64 was so, so, so special for me. And you know, all the games you mentioned, I have memories of. I, I picked up Shadows of the Empire the day it came out. Had it pre-ordered, actually, at Toys R Us. Okay. And a lot of people, you know, I, I think when the whole conversation came up about video games costing $70 now, mm -hmm. there's this whole debate I'm sure you saw on the internet where some of the old heads like, like us were like, hey, there were games that cost like $80 back in the day. And everyone's like, there's no way. It's like, no, really? Like Shadows of the Empire was $79.99 at Toys R Us. Mm -hmm. Doom 64 was $84.99. Yeah. And that's that's in US dollars. That's here in Arizona. That's how much it cost. Yeah. And it's wild to think that, but you know, it's it's the truth. But to stay on subject, Shadows of the Empire. Absolutely love that game. I remember seeing the footage for it. Uh, Nintendo Power had put out a video to promote the Nintendo 64. You know, about it's probably about three months, maybe longer, but at least three months before the 64 came out. And I cannot tell you how many times that video got played on my TV, mm -hmm. just pouring over the graphics. I'm like, oh my god, yep. like I cannot believe we're getting the Hoth battle. This. Yeah, so cool. And I'm sure if anyone plays it today, they're probably going to be like, man, this game is not good. Yeah. <laughs> but it was very special. And Turok, I remember playing the first one. Of course, my cousin bought that one at Toys R Us. Turok 2, Seeds of Evil, that first game that used the expansion pack. A lot of great memories. But uh, Ocarina of Time, man, I missed a week of school for that. I love it. I did. I did. And I played sick. My mom knows. She knows about that. I mean, now as an adult. <laughs> <laughs> she would hide the controllers when she'd leave for work. Yeah. 
She'd take both the 64 controllers because, of course, since you're sick, you know, you need to rest. So I'm going to take these. It's okay. And after she'd leave, I'd go search the room and figure out where they were. Obviously, I'm only taking one of them. Then you take a mental snapshot of exactly how the wire is wound <laughs> up on the controller. So you replicate that when you put it back. Oh, and yes. then you always, you always got to put it back like at least 30 minutes before mom comes home. Because my mom will check. She'll like literally put her hand on the 64 to make sure it's like not hot. She'd, she, she'd go that <laughs> far. So, and then she'd come home and be like, Hey, uh, you know, I'm back home. How are you feeling? Do you want to play, you know, some, some video games? Would that help? But yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd really like to, and then I'd play some more. So yeah, I missed a whole week of school and I beat it. Amazing. That week. That's and I came best. back to school on Monday. Everyone's like, dude, people thought you were dead, man. Are you okay? I'm like, oh, better than ever. I just beat Zelda. <laughs> yeah, it was it was great. So fond memories during that era. And I'll be, there's so many games, but I'd be remiss to not mention the wrestling games. Oh, yeah, for sure. I, I mean, I was a huge wrestling fan during that time with, of course, WCW and WWF at the time and the NWO and DX, Stone Cold. All of that, man. It was so much fun. And I remember renting uh, WCW versus NWO World Tour. That was the first one. Loved it. Then Revenge came out. Took it to the next level. Oh, yes. Played that a ton. Yeah. And then we had WrestleMania 2000. And then No Mercy. Which everyone thinks says that No Mercy is pretty much the GOAT. And I get that. I think all three are great. Same. Revenge. WrestleMania and No Mercy World Tour set the stage for it. But man, it's just like, how is it 2024 and those are still the best wrestling games ever? Yep. Yeah, I played so much Revenge that the other two, although I have them and they were, I thought they were great. They couldn't, there was something about the magic of Revenge. I don't know what it, I don't know what it was, but okay. I like, I still look back on that. It's I think maybe because I played it so much longer, maybe. Yeah. And I just had, and I, I also, I was not a huge, I've never been a huge wrestling fan, but I loved Bill Goldberg, like as terrible oh. of a wrestler as he was. And, you know, like, uh, I just loved his whole shtick. And so like, I would go down the, the, like, go down to the history books and and like you know what like i think i remember buying like vhs of his highlights and stuff like that just because oh yeah like it would also introduce me to other wrestlers because i didn't have like where I, I grew up out in the sticks so we didn't have cable and stuff like that so to watch wrestling was kind of rare so i had to i had to kind of go back and piece together like who's raven and who's who's right. this uh I can't remember his name, but he had like a skull mask and he was kind of a taller guy with long hair. Um, oh, and, uh, what? Kane? No, no, no. This was like the, the WCW versus NWO revenge. Um, and his older costumes, he had like green and black, like rib cage with a mask on, if I remember correctly. And then it kind of evolved over time. He ended up looking a lot like Sting, but um uh, I'd have to fire up the game to even see, but just yeah. to try to learn about some of the history of some of these, of these, uh, you know, where they came from, what their, what their stories yeah. were. I just, I loved it. Yeah. I had so much fun with it. And I, I will agree with you that for some reason, and that's why I said, everyone says that, you know, no mercy is like the, the goat when it comes to N64 wrestling games. But for me, for some reason, the one that always stands out is revenge. And yeah, maybe it is because we played it so much more than WrestleMania 2000 mm -hmm. and no mercy, but revenge is just so special. That game got played so much. I absolutely love it. I love it to this day. I mean, I have a, my launch 64 is modded now to, uh, run com component cables. And I picked up the HD RetroVision component cables 
and then I run that through my retro tink 5x. So I mean, I'm I'm trying over here, man. Oh, I'm yeah. trying <laughs> to get the best picture possible out of my 64 until uh, analog finally releases their their analog 3D 4K mm-hmm. Nintendo 64, and then I'll be picking that up and probably won't need to use that anymore. But yeah, I just love the 64, man. Yeah, such good times, such good yep. times. Well, we went way off. Back to Switch after Odyssey. What's number What's number two on the list? So number two is going to have two games, and I'm sure you know which ones they are. Uh, this is the only selection that has two games, okay? But that's the Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. Fair. And I, I grouped them together because you know, a lot of people ask, which, one's, which one do you think is better? What is better? Which one's your favorite? You may not, you know, there may be reasons why you choose one or the other. And ultimately, I love them both. And I, you could say I love them both equally. And they both have different kind of vibes to them. Obviously, different gameplay mechanics. Tears of the Kingdom, the gameplay mechanics changed drastically. And there was a lot to learn there. But it made for... God, it made for a great time because, I mean, we just saw this formula being applied to Echoes of Wisdom in many ways in that you have these puzzles and there's numerous ways to solve them. It's unique to the player. And I love that. And that's something I want to see, you know, continued forward with the Zelda franchise. And I think we will. I think proof of it is Echoes of Wisdom. The fact that that idea made its way to a 2D top-down Zelda, I think it's huge. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love these games. Playing Breath of the Wild was very special. The amount of hours I put into that game, I, I don't know. There was a screenshot... There was a really high resolution sc- a screenshot somewhere on the internet that had a picture of the map, right? And I saved it. I emailed FedEx Kinkos and I had it printed on a, uh, I think a 16 by 20 poster. Wow. So I had a map. I I I made myself a map because I'm like, dude, I need to mark these shrines, right? And figure out like kind of what I'm doing here. Yeah it have a better way of attacking this very old school because remember yeah. they used to come with a map right yeah <laughs> they did and that was that was a big reason why i did it because i'm like this is going to be fun right and so i had a map and i had my sharpie and i'd mark uh, the shrines on the map and i'd mark like areas where i know i needed to go and i i know i could have done this in the game but at the same time I didn't want to pause the game every time mm-hmm. put a marker on it and on pause it. I thought this would be fun and it actually was, it was really fun. And for me, I, something as small as that really made the game memorable because I don't know if I'll ever do that again. Sure. Yeah. But I, I decided to do it and it ended up being really fun. And I think I still have the map uh, somewhere with the game. I might've folded it up and put it inside, but that was really special. I think going from like Skyward Sword to Breath of the Wild and getting rid of the the waggle controls, the motion controls. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you can still use them in Breath of the Wild, and ultimately, that was a Wii U game, but it'll never be remembered as a Wii U game. No. Nope. And it lost its its unique Wii U functionality. They removed that because they didn't want people to think that the Wii U was the superior version. Yeah, which is a very interesting interview. But for me, that was really special to have a, the first open world Zelda. Right, I think that's ultimately what we get down to is that this is an open world Zelda. You can attack it however you want. You can go anywhere on the map. 
it reminded me of how I felt when I played uh, the first Zelda on NES. And okay. you're just exploring. Yep. You're exploring that map. You're checking things out. We didn't know back then that, at least initially, that in order to go to this dungeon, you needed this item. And so on and so forth. And I think with Breath of the Wild, the fact that that didn't matter anymore was cool. Just go where you want. Yeah, and I like the linear Zeldas. Like, I like the linear 3D Zeldas. I do. But if I had to choose one direction when it came to, hey, we can either be linear or we could be open world. I got to go open world. I would say, can we borrow some stuff from the 3D Zeldas, though? For sure. Yep. I love the dungeons in the 3D Zeldas. Yeah. You know, there's, there's that, that's a whole discussion about how to build that kind of the ultimate Zelda going forward. And I'm sure that's what we're going to see on Switch, too. Is, hey, we did the linear. We did the open world. How can we make it the best of both now? Because mm-hmm. I, because... I'm sure Nintendo's here, and that's what fans want. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and Tears got all play close. Like, like, you know, adding, like, dungeons and, and bosses that weren't just blights. You know, they were just kind of, like... That's, like, you mentioned Odyssey. The 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 Brutals. I was not a huge fan of the Brutals. Um, and the Blights I was not a huge fan of either. Like, those those were the, like my two main gripes with those with those games as much as i love them i'm just like those those bosses i felt were were a little on the weak side yeah i agree totally and i i love the the bosses that are you know huge scream filling bosses the ones yes. we we you know we we've grown up with right right yeah bosses it's always exciting to finally you know, get the boss key and get into the the final room where the boss is and just see it. See mm-hmm. what kind of form it takes. Right. And yeah, I thought that that was uh that was missing a little bit, right? In Breath of the Wild for sure. But those two games really really special cuz you you went open world and then obviously with the sequel you really changed the way you play and the way you you solve puzzles and they did something that I, I didn't think was possible for us to solve the riddle, solve the puzzle, but we can all do it in different ways. Right. Mm-hmm. That was special. I live streamed that game on my channel and it was just so interesting seeing what people said to do in chat and then what I was thinking and everything I read and everything I thought, none of it was the same. Mm hmm. We all had different ideas. I'm like, this is really cool. This feels like a community effort almost yeah. in the way that we can attack this game. So yeah, no doubt we knew Zelda was probably going to be there, right? <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. For sure. What's number three? So number three, it, I think it might be interesting, but I don't think it would be to you. And that is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Of course. Yeah. And look, hey, I bought the game. uh, I bought the game the day it came out on Wii U. My girlfriend and I at the time, we played that game so much trying to get, uh, what was it? uh, All three stars Yep. on each circuit. Yep. Yeah. Try to unlock everything, get the coins to unlock uh, all the wheels, all the carts, all the gliders. I had so much fun with it. And I remember thinking at that time is like wow man I've played all the Mario Karts so much throughout my life all of them and this to me is by far the best one and that's that's what I walked away thinking on the Wii U okay is that this is by far the best one and I have like specific memories about each one, like Mario Kart 64. I think that had the best battle mode. Yep. I Especially would agree. The, the block fortress, the block oh. fortress oh, was yeah. so much fun. Yeah. 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 Well, so, DS may have given it a run for its money when it, when the, yep. the, you know, but that was a few years down the road. Yep. 
and double dash was uh cool it just didn't feel that fast and that bothered me mm, it never felt like i was going fast in that game but i, I still enjoyed it i like the mechanic of course of having two racers but when it got announced for switch mario kart 8 deluxe thinking like yeah you know like course i i own the game and i still have my wii u but i'm gonna pick it up this will be fun the, the graphics are going to be enhanced a little bit and you can play it portably and you know we can play it online yeah i'll, I'll get it like all of this sounds worth it to me right but then the way this game was supported over the entire console lifespan of the switch the amount of, and I'm not just talking about the big stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about all the updates too. So many updates, so many refinements, so many, so much tweaking to get it perfect. Yeah. But then, you you go and you do the DLC booster pass, <laughs> giving us 40, 48 new tracks. Mind blowing. Because to me, that's like, oh my god, it's almost like we're getting. A, a second Mario Kart in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Absolutely. Equivalency. Like, you're getting 48 tracks, right? Yeah. And so now I'm thinking, wait, so we got 96 tracks? Yeah. In a Mario Kart game. That's crazy to think. It In itself. And all the characters and all the, the different parts carts the wheels the gliders all that is so cool but adding link stuff drives, along the way like yeah and it, it gets you i mean it gets me thinking right what direction are we going next and again like we talked about with odyssey came out in 2017 i haven't got a new one since to me i i look at mario kart 8 this is a a 2014 wii u game yeah. That had a team work on because Nintendo said they were having a team working on the new Mario Kart. They were splitting the team. Some of them are working on the new and the other part of the team is working on the booster pass. So we know without them even telling us, we know that the new Mario Kart has been cooking for years. I mean, by the time it comes out, which... My prediction is we will get it next year. 11 years. Yeah. Launch title or no? I go back and forth on it. Here's the thing. I think we're either going to get a 3D Mario at launch or a Mario Kart. One is going to be launch. One is going to be big holiday title. Mm -hmm. is, it Possibly, cross, is it cross gen? I... I think no. I don't think Mario Kart will be. Because I think this gives the how many is this sold like sixty two or three million yes. units? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think that's a great way to get sixty million people to come over to Switch to ultimately. Still in the top ten week after yeah. week. Week after week. I see the numbers. I see uh Paul Gale posting them on Twitter. I'm just like Mind blowing. Yeah. It's always in the top 10. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's uh, unlike anything I've seen before, but I think it's so deserved. And the excitement around each new cup coming out in that DLC booster pass, like I, w I was really looking forward to each one coming out. I think I live streamed each one and I was there like waiting for the download to come in and it just hyped for it. It, and they did the same thing with Smash. Those were it was such an event every time, and so I hope they really paid attention to those two things going forward, and that we see we see that moving forward. That like, you know, support these games for a long time because we're all here for it. Yeah, and that's the thing, and this is why I think Mario Kart is coming out year one. Is that Nintendo saw, and again, I don't think this was like. So much the the long term plan, okay. 
I, I do think that Nintendo was planning on giving us a Mario Kart, a new one, on Switch. Initially, that was the plan. Oh, for sure. But it got scrapped because this is selling like hotcakes. What if we continue to invest in this title, we mm-hmm. continue to support it, and we put new tracks on it and give the other team extra time to just make something even better than this for the next console? Yeah. And, you know, that's obviously what we ended up getting, but... I think Nintendo unintentionally saw what an evergreen Mario Kart could do for Switch Mm -hmm. by having a Mario Kart. Because it came out in April, right? April 2017, a month after. Yep. So they saw what happened. I mean, good God. This is absolutely wild how much it sold. And so I think you have to do that again, right? Why wouldn't you? I can give you How one. I can give you one passed? one reason, and it would it's be here. Mario Kart Eight Complete or HD, and then it's all ninety six tracks enhanced yeah. for the Switch Two cross play, and then the new one is a couple years out, which I really hope is not the case. But I would be very very sad. Okay, so. I am going to talk about that a little bit, but not right now. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you why, because it's going to link back. Now, wave six. It was December 2023, right? That The last one came Uh out. Okay. So I think there's been a long enough gap there. Currently, there's a bundle for the Switch with Mario Kart, which we have it every year. Two bundles. Yeah, but it comes with the NSO membership, which comes with, of course, all the the DLC. So in a way, they're giving you like the complete version Mm -hmm. right now if you buy one. But of course, it's not on cartridge and you have to have that membership. So is there an opportunity, right, for them to release the complete version at retail? I mean, absolutely. Of course there is. And they almost did in Japan. You can get up to wave five on the cart. Yeah. And they do that. Like, I have I have Breath of the Wild, the Japanese version as well, with all the DLC included on the cart. Yeah. Which is really cool. I don't know why they don't do that here. But yeah, it's definitely a thing in Japan. And I was watching japan as well and i'm like well why didn't they get wave six Mm -hmm. but then you think about it could very well be a reason why they didn't get wave six because a complete version is coming at some point which would lend more sense to switch to complete version well it's a whole other conversation about when do they do they do a player's choice kind of thing I mean, as, I'd love to see that be brought back. As to see switch as as the switch two is coming in and the switch two is going out, let's let's deeply discount all of our biggest titles so that you know people can complete their collections and jump into these titles at a at a at a discounted price. Yeah, especially with uh, you know the rumor, and I, I believe it to uh, of course be true that the switch two will be backwards compatible. I completely mm-hmm. believe that. I think what's up for debate and speculation for me is if there's going to be any sort of enhancements with the DLSS. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure uh, if there is going to be, it it of course would be on a game by game, case by case basis because the DLSS isn't going to just blanket make games better. It's going to have to be coded to do that. They're going to have to add that into the actual original game to take advantage of that. But I I do wonder if that's going to be a big focus. Yeah. I hope so. Okay. okay. Let's go into the next one. Number four. And so this is where I said I would talk a little bit more about <laughs> yeah. that theory. And I'm sure you know what it is, but it's, it's Smash Brothers Ultimate. Sure. Okay. And they really... God, they really lived up. Sakurai really lived up to that ultimate name. My God. I 
I, I can't believe just how much content is in this game, the amount of characters. And again, you mentioned how exciting it was for the new reveals, and it, I mean, it totally was. Anytime we got a direct or Nintendo put out a tweet about Smash invitations coming out and the speculation over who's it going to be? Who are they going to add? You know, what like what character could they get from what third party, right? And of course, I remember when that mural was like, when it hit the web as a rumor, that Smash Brothers mural with all the characters. Yeah. And I remember people had saw, like, is that, I think Banjo was in that one, that mural. Mm, okay. Everyone's like, dude, there's no way. That's Banjo right. People used Smash. to put up fake ones or they yeah. like, I remember now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was awesome. And of course, Banjo being you know, owned now by Microsoft through Rare, everyone's like, there's no way. There's no way this is real. And I'm like thinking to myself, I'm thinking, this could be real. Mm -hmm. Microsoft loves Nintendo. They do. They respect the heck out of them. I think any console manufacturer, any developer, you have to respect them. You have to respect what they've done. Because it's kind of like they paved the way in a lot of ways for where we're at today with a lot of the innovations. And you could even just go back to the beginning and be like, you know, they they saved video games in the US from right. the crash. Yeah. They did a lot of things right. And so I think about that. And with, with Smash Ultimate, it's like, who can't we get if we can get Banjo? Then we got Castlevania. We got Simon Belmont. We got Richter. Yep. What? Mm -hmm. And you know, for me, being a long time Castlevania fan since the originals on NES, I'm like, this is crazy. Then we get Dragon Quest in there. It's like, what? Final Fantasy's in there. Cloud and Sephiroth. The game that we didn't get. Yeah. Because Nintendo chose to go the cartridge route. Right. Yep. <laughs> But but here they are somehow the the two biggest characters in that game in Final Fantasy VII somehow here they are in Smash Brothers Ultimate this is mind blowing and then Kingdom Hearts it's like what Tekken Minecraft Street Fighter Fatal Fury mm -hmm. Persona it's like this is just crazy absolutely crazy yo I was clambering for Mithra and Pyra before the game launched oh. You know, like, wow. like, or some variation of Rex or something along those lines, like some kind of Xenoblade Chronicles 2 representation. Cause I was, I had fallen in love with that game. Yeah. Kind of the first RPG that like their JRPG that like, like outside of like Pokemon that I was like, yo, I love, like it ignited my love for for JRPGs, I can't, it, the hardest time for, the hardest thing for me is just trying to invest the time into them because it's just like, I know there's, it's so long, but, uh, but I couldn't put two down and couldn't wait. I mean, just hoped and hoped it, 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 it bothers me that they're so good in the game because when you play with them, it's like, oh, okay, you're picking the, and it's like, but I genuinely like these characters. They're the only two characters I have in elite smash also. Oh, that's awesome, man. Yeah. I I don't know, like for me, when I think about Ultimate, I think about how much it lives up to that name and exceeds it. Mm -hmm. But th another part of me really says, how can you top this? And I hear some people saying maybe we uh, maybe they do a reboot. And start from from the beginning, right? But but why? Why this is this is amazing. This is peak. Mm -hmm. Why reboot when you're at peak? Are you afraid to fall from the peak? Is the question? Because that's usually why you reboot is because you hit the peak and you don't think you can go any higher. So we start from scratch again. 
I don't know. Like, I don't want to personally. I don't want to see that. If that's how you, if if that is hypothetically how Nintendo feels, I would much rather say, hey, can you give us Smash Ultimate HD, whatever you want to call it? Can you give us a Super Ultimate version? I mean, look, Capcom's done it five hundred times. Yeah, Street Fighter Two, Super Street Fighter Two, Two Turbo Championship Edition, so on and so forth. No, they could just call it uh, Smash Bros. Ultimate Rollback and give it that uh, rollback netcode so that the online is actually good. And yeah, I wouldn't need anything else. But we're talking about the company that just gave us 48 new tracks on Mario Kart. So why not release Ultimate again, fix the netcode, and continue, like, add first party characters. Add as many characters as you can, the ultimate yeah. HD, and and then continue with the fighter pass. Like, and that's easier on Sakurai. Like that poor guy. Like, you know, like he's a workhorse. He is. He is. I and like, him. there's not many things that I would say. Let the let the developer George Lucas their game. This is one of them. This is one of them. I agree wholeheartedly. I mean, he put his heart and soul into this. Mm-hmm. And it's very clear. It's evident. But yeah, when you, when you talk about how can you top this, I think, why do we have to top it? Like, we've, we've hit, we are at the peak. Yep. You know, can we can we build now on the peak? Can we stay there and and continue to build right there? And I think we can with what you just said. You know, apply the booster pass Mario Kart theory to this. Give us more first party characters. But then with the third parties, we all talk about Switch 2 and I've talked about this a lot about how we expect so many third parties to come over that weren't part of Switch 1. And, they're, you know, they're going to come over in bigger droves. But obviously a great way to ensure... 100% that a third party game makes it to Switch 2 is by signing a deal with said developer to have them in Smash. Mm-hmm. We'll get your character in Smash. You bring this over. Hey, Microsoft, we we know that you are putting your considering putting your games everywhere, most likely will. Indiana Jones is coming to PS5 early next year we know that their biggest franchise just went to unreal 5 and that runs on current switches yep right i mean look at Fortnite, and so yeah i think it's a very real possibility we see the halo combat evolved remake if that's what it ends up being on on switch that's exactly where i was going with this too is halo Mm -hmm. halo hey we can get master chief in the game Bro, bring us the Halo collection on uh, Switch 2. All I wanted, all I wanted is challenger approaches and you hear the whistle of a sticky grenade fire up (laughs) and then stick right to Mario's nose. Ooh, that'd be good. Right? Like, yeah, like, and then Chief enters the fight. You know what I mean? Like, just. Yeah, that'd be brilliant. Brilliant. (sighs) It'd be a great way. But I think about that, I mean, let's go to the other side, too. Think about this. And I'm, I'm just thinking about it now. I mean, we're getting Lego Horizon Adventure. Mm-hmm. Who's to say Aloy can't make her way into yeah. <laughs> Smash Brothers? Kratos? If, if, hey, you want to you wanna bring over uh, Horizon Remake to Switch 2? You want to bring over uh, for Forbidden West to switch to? Mm-hmm. We'll get Aloy in the game, and yeah, Kratos. I mean, I love God of War. Love the games. Yeah. I think the sky's the limit because it's like everybody wins here. Mm-hmm. Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, the consumer, everybody wins. Uh, obviously, the consumer experience is obvious how we win, but it's like. Your brand, your IP that makes its way into Smash Brothers is going to see 
an increase in sales. There's and, no way it won't. And you can't tell me that all of us nerds would not love to see Mario and Astro Bot duke it out in Smash. <laughs> yeah. You know, who else even... even I, I think you got to get... Uh, was it Toys for Bob? Yeah. Activision? Mm-hmm. But it's Toys for Bob? You got to get Crash Bandicoot in there. Of course, with the Megahorn. You know. With the Megahorn. He's got to fight with the Megahorn. How great would that be? Yeah. Because we all remember that. And obviously that would make the the older gamers i guess that would be special for all of us to have crash in there and so just naming some characters you and i off the top of our head i'm not doing a deep dive here neither are you but this is just proof to me that you can continue to build on this if it's not broke don't fix it Mm -hmm. more characters uh more arenas to fight in more courses a lot more what else do you have to build on i think the engine's there you know what i mean that the actual engine is there you got to fix the online yep. uh the- maybe a subspace mode yep there you go yeah because that was fun yeah there's it's like you said there's no reason to fix what's not broken just add to this like just add to it at this point and and not that people people sometimes hate this term but throw battle pass on it like i want i want a reason to play smash more than just the like i want to continue i want to let's start doing costumes you know let's start adding costumes to these characters let's let's add cosmetics like i would I am not a fan of battle passes, Yep. but I would for this. Mm-hmm. I would for this. I would wholeheartedly because, you know, this is, this is as good as it gets, right? As a Nintendo fan, as a Smash Brothers fan, we've all, for, for, for people who've played all the Smash Brothers, this is as good as it gets. Right. And why try and rewrite it? give us more of the same and i don't know if that's going to be the motto of switch to yeah. give us more of the same but better but improved you know nintendo to super nintendo yeah. but better because mm-hmm. this will be an even bigger jump I was talking with someone about that this morning you know we're going from 2015 technology that the tegra x1 came out the it released in the first half of 2015 and that, of course, that's the chip in the Switch. By the time Switch 2 comes out, that is 10-year-old technology. This is going to be a huge jump. Massive, yeah. Yeah, no question. No question, okay. Number All one, right. or not number one, but number, you know, the last, the last one. So... Obviously, there's so many games, right? But I wanted to keep it, again, Nintendo exclusive. And this one's on here because this was one of my absolute, it still is one of my absolute favorite games. And I was abs- I was so shocked. This was probably one of the uh, most genuine surprises of my life when it comes to video games when this game was announced. Hmm. I just could not believe it. And that's Super Mario RPG. Okay. The remake. I I absolutely adore this game on Super Nintendo. Huge fan. See the box behind you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it it came out a few months before the 64. Came out, I think, in uh, May 96. Mm-hmm. Remember renting it at Blockbuster, seeing the box art, and just thinking, like, what is this? Yeah. And that that was... Uh, I, don't, I had played, like, Final Fantasy as a kid on NES, but didn't really know what I was doing. Uh, we played Earthbound. Of course, when that came out, I love Earthbound. But this felt like the the introduction I needed at that age mm. 
to RPGs to then really understand how everything works, this turn-based combat. And again, always, who better, who better to teach than Mario? But it was really at that point where I'm like, okay, I really, I really grasp this now. Now I'm going to go back and play Earthbound and Final Fantasy 2 and 3 mm, okay. on the SNES. I had played games with active battle, like Secret of Mana, and loved them. But the turn-based, I just had a hard time. Same, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Mario RPG fixed all of that, right? I think for me, the thing that is probably most memorable is the story and the char- the characters. The characters in Mario RPG. Because I've played... I played all the Mario and Luigi games. When they came out, I played all of them. I'm super hyped for Brothership. I played all the Paper Marios. And I still go back to Mario RPG's characters. I'll never forget Gino and Mallow. Just never will. Right? And the fact that you have Bowser that joins your party was just mind-blowing back then, right? Sure, yeah. What? Yeah. Bowser, this is crazy. Well, and after playing so through cool. this game, the remake, because I didn't beat it prior to that, I, I had a friend who I would borrow it from periodically, but he loved it so much he wouldn't let me keep it for long periods of time. And so uh, after playing through it on on Switch, I understand the hype for Geno and Smash. Like, it makes sense now. Yeah. And, of course... Gino's a character I've talked about for a long time, hoping that maybe we could get him, right? Mm-hmm. And he's a he's a spirit in Smash, right? Right. Is he a spirit or not? He's not a trophy. He's a, a spirit, if I recall. I, be- I believe so. And didn't they give him a me costume? Yeah, they did. They came so close. Right. And all I could think is like, you guys holding out for for the next Smash, I hope. Yeah. Which I'm fine with. Just get just get him in there, you know? But I was shocked to see this. I really was. Especially so late in the Switch's life cycle. Because, you know, last year. Last year, everyone kind of thought that Tears of the Kingdom might be the last big Switch title mm. before Switch 2 comes out. And then obviously we had that Nintendo Direct over the summer. And they're like, hey, Pikmin 4 is coming out and Super Mario Wonder and Super Mario RPG. Like, whoa, okay. I mean, yeah. I'm I'm really excited for Switch 2, but I will gladly take this. I'm very happy about this. So I, I, I just think, man, it's just really interesting that we got this. And I always wonder, is there any chance we can get a, a sequel? an actual super Mario RPG too, because Nintendo and square are really, they're really tight. Yeah. They're really tight now. And you know, square, they're always very open about how their games don't hit their sales targets Mm -hmm. (laughs) and their internal sales targets. I mean, I think this would knock it out of the park. Super Mario RPG too. And the assets are there now. And I think we're going to see, I think brothership is going to, I've been doing a deep dive into the previews. I have a video coming out probably tomorrow. And it like, I can't wait for this game. And that hype is because of RPG. I haven't played the other games in the series. But this feels like this feels like it's going to really scratch that itch, especially because of how bizarre the characters are. Like they're all plugins that you can put like like lights into they have like light sockets and stuff like it's just a a very like a water and electricity is so strange so bizarre but like that i mean you know well look at mallow look at gino like 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 there's just that that game is chock full of of just very oddball oddball characters and then this just looks like a it looks like a cartoon being able to you know the the luigi logic have you seen this yeah 
Yeah, where he like turns Mario and him into a UFO. You know, like yeah. like I hey, I, I, saw you, I saw your short on it. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, I'm hoping that uh I, I hope that Square is gets the opportunity to make Super Mario RPG two, like a direct sequel. And you know, I would love it. Yeah, as you mentioned, the assets are there. And I think it makes financial sense, right? That once you create an engine and the assets, if you can reuse them, Mm -hmm. like you should. And to an extent, you look at Link's Awakening remake and then Echoes of Wisdom. Yep. And it's easy to see. I am very much of the mind. I have a video I'm working on. I think Wonder 2 is a very real possibility with the Koopa Kids. Yeah, we got to bring them back. It, that makes sense. Well, and if you look at the history, like they were in 3, they were in 4, Bowser Jr. was in New, Koopalings were in mm. New Super Mario Bros. 2, and Wii, and then they weren't here for a little bit, and then they, and then they, you know, so... That's so, true. So there's Time, timeline wise, it makes sense. There's kind of a history there of them getting put in, getting taken out, you know, that kind of thing. I would love, I mean, I'd love to see it. It'll be very interesting. Do you think that would be a switch Two title? Oh yeah. I think it'll be an early switch Two title. I mean, I'd love to see it happen, man. Mm-hmm. I don't know that it'll be a, like, I don't know that it will necessarily, we'll see the, unless they decide to try to finish what pop started in the first wonder game and wreak havoc again you know and i don't know why but i would love to see them lean into like a mech mechanic similar to like kirby robo planet you know or planet robo whatever it is uh yeah robobot i think is what it's called where where like they are like because they have the clown car i want to see that clown car i i honestly it's such an 80s kid thing but i would love to see all of them like Mighty Morphin Power Ranger or Voltron, the clown cars, so that yeah. the final boss is all of them together. Like, oh. like, yeah, to build one ultimate. Uh huh. That would yeah. be cool. That's a good idea. I like that. I would love it. I mean, if anyone could do it, it would be Nintendo. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I don't think that's too far fetched. It's not an idea I would have thought of. But now that you say it, I'm I'm quick to tell you that that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> that would be really cool. We'll see. See, we'll see. Well, this has been awesome. I kept you way longer than I anticipated. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I think we could probably end up going for hours and not even realize it. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I think we could. I think we could. But the the time for the time for me flew by fast. There was a lot of good stuff to talk about and. Yeah, I mean, God, again, there's just so many topics we could jump into. So, yes. Yeah. Well, we'll have to get a We'll get a part two and a part three down the road for sure. So, uh, again, let people know where they can connect with you. Yeah. So you can find me on YouTube at Thunder Stash Gaming. And again, on my channel, I review both new and retro games. Of course, this is a super busy time of the year for for all of us for a variety of reasons. Holidays coming up. You know, the, all the sports are on TV now. We got football, we got baseball playoffs coming up, we got the NBA season. So it's an exciting time. But for, for us who cover the video games, this is a crazy time. Yeah. And yeah, I remember going into the year, a lot of people were like, uh, I don't know how 2024 is going to be, you know, outside of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth in right. February. Yeah. What do we really got? And it's like I look at I look at my uh, dry erase board with all my my games on there that I I have upcoming for reviews and just looking at at uh, from September 26th, which was Echoes of Wisdom, to December 9th, mm-hmm. which is Indiana Jones. The amount of games coming out is nuts. Right. Yeah. Like the games that I want to play mm-hmm. is like 20 plus. Wow. And I was like, good Lord. So good luck. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So I'll be super busy. Uh, I am working on a review for a game that just was announced physically. 
through limited run games, but the game came out four years ago. And it's on Switch, on PS5, and it's also on Steam, but of course physically on Switch and PS5, and that's called Pumpkin Jack. And so I'll be posting that review either today or tomorrow. And it's a it's a 3D action platformer. If you grew up playing these you know, in the 90s, 2000s, there's a lot to love here, but very interesting game. And with Halloween right around the corner, I thought, hey, this would be a great time to play this. I've never played it. And so I'm about to beat it. And I will say I'm having a, a very good time. So uh, tune in for that review. But outside of that, man, there's going to be a lot going on, on that channel with video game reviews. And then, of course, uh, every Wednesday, we have the Nintendo Byte podcast. I'm a co-host on there. And it, of course, that's going to be busy, too, because Switch 2, as we all know, it's right around the corner. Yeah. Yeah. It could be any day now. I wake up every morning. At Just wondering. O'clock. Yep. I, ch- I Every morning I wake up at four. But the first thing I do, I don't like doing this. I don't like getting on my phone when I wake up because then you get stuck. But I do check Twitter because I got to see. Yep. Is What's, today the day? Is today the day? <laughs> is it trending? Yeah, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks so much. And uh, guys, thank you for listening and or watching. And we will see you in the next one. Bye, everybody. Da-da-da-da-da.